right, here are seven exercises you can do in a full body workout from home. I'm going to go over how you can do it with dumbbells and body weight or resistance bands in your home gym setup. The first exercise we are starting out with is going to be the squat. The main target of this exercise is the quads with a secondary being the glutes assisting in the movement. Now regardless of the equipment you use, I want your hands down by your sides. I found I did something like a front squat that my biceps and even my shoulders gave out before my legs did. So having the resistance down by my hips actually allowed me to push a little harder with more resistance for better results. Not only that, but if you ever need to bail out of the exercise, you can simply just drop the resistance or dumbbells on the floor. Now for exercise number two, we are going to focus on doing the bent over row. The primary muscles worked here are the mid and upper back, while also having a secondary focus on the biceps. The position of the exercise will be the same regardless of using dumbbells or J-hooks. We're kind of in a bent over style position when doing the movement. However, if you do have a bench and you want to use this with your dumbbells, you can lie facing the bench and actually do chest supported rows instead. This does help to remove some of the lower back tension if that is a hindering part of this lift for you. Now if you're using resistance bands, you can either use the J-hook handles or the bar. It's really up to you. There's no major difference outside of you might get a limited range of motion using the bar as it hits your body where the handles can go a bit higher on the sides. And now for exercise number three, we have the overhead press. Now for the primary target of the overhead press, we are going to be hitting the shoulders where a lot of it's going to be on the front and mid delt, of course the posterior delt as well, but those front and middle delts get a lot of the movement. And the secondary muscles worked are going to be the triceps as you extend up overhead and then bring it back down to your chin or upper chest level. And for this exercise, you can do it either standing or sitting. For me, as I get um, higher and higher uh, weight in dumbbells, I like to actually go into a seated position as I can kick them into place. For resistance bands, I can simply do it standing, but just know it can be a little bit harder to get into the standing position, especially if you're trying to heave dumbbells into that overhead position setup, which can actually be a bit dangerous. So do it fits best for you based on the weights that you have. Now on to exercise number four, we're going to be doing the Romanian deadlift. So the primary muscles worked here are going to be the hamstrings with a secondary focus on the glutes assisting in the movement. Now this is a hip hinging exercise. So you're actually going to be pushing through the floor, not pulling with your back. You're actually pushing through your feet on the floor and hinging at the waist to get into a standing position. This is a little different than a squat where you're actually doing knee extension versus hip extension. Of course, there is some in a squat. But those are the main two differences. And of course, we're hitting more hamstrings than quads in this type of exercise. And now exercise number five, we're going to be doing the chest press. The primary muscle worked here is going to be, of course, the chest with a secondary focus on the triceps assisting in the movement. Now, if you're using dumbbells, you can either do this laying on the floor, which is my preferred position, or on a bench. Now, with the floor, you do get a bit more safety in the movement as you can't overextend um, when you go and bring your dumbbells down by your chest, so you're kind of limited by the floor. You can also drop out of the movement at any time. And for resistance bands, you're going to have to put it up around your back. You can use either the bar or the handles. I find it works a bit better with the bar for me, um, but you can also, if you want, put it underneath the standing platform. It is a bit awkward as this will be four inches off the ground if you're laying down on the floor to do this, but no, it is an option if you'd like some pre-stretch in that band. And now on to exercise number six, we have the chin up or chin down. The focus here is the lats for this exercise, with the secondary being the biceps as we are supinating our hands for the chin up style version. For the chin up, you will need some kind of anchor above you so that you can pull your body weight up to your hands, or if you're doing the chin down version, which is the resistance bands, you need to have the resistance uh, anchored above you, but your hands are gonna be pulled down to your body versus pulling your body up to it. Just remember your hands are stupinated or facing towards you just so we can get some of the biceps activated in that movement. All right, and our seventh exercise is the calf raises. And the target here is going to be your calves. They weren't really worked very much in the squat and remaining deadlifts, so it is the only isolation movement in this entire workout that I want to add in. Also, depending on the weight or resistance you are holding when doing this, you may actually bring in a lot of trap development as well as your body is trying to, or your 
traps are trying to hold that weight in place. Same with your grip. You're going to get stronger grip just holding that weight in place while doing this movement. You might actually find this pretty hard to do if you haven't been able to hold a lot of weight in the past. And of course, if you feel this is just too easy, try one leg at a time with the same weight. You do have to balance a bit more, but sometimes you'll just have to do that in order to get enough resistance for a stimulus to build muscle. So that is the entire workout. Here are some things to consider in order to enhance your results with this program over time. Now in the beginning, if you're just starting out, I actually recommend that you do all three sets and not go to failure simply to learn the proper form and technique. As you get better at that technique, then you're going to want to add the intensity to take it to that failure where you can then reduce sets as you start to really teach yourself how to burn out in the first set. But before that, simply learn the movement and technique. You'll of course build some muscle and get stronger, but from there you can really push it and avoid injury down the road. Now for rep speed, I like a six second rep. So you can simply do a three up, three down kind of thing, but here is how I personally break it down. First, I have a three second eccentric or where I'm lengthening the muscle. Think of doing a biceps curl where you're lowering the weight, the lengthening of the muscle. So for this, it would be three second count in that direction. I would then, once I get to the end range of motion there, so you're still contracted, you're not fully locked out, but you're like still in a slightly contracted state, we would slowly change direction. So I actually have a zero for my uh, static on the point. So it goes three, oh, two, one. So we're at three, zero. So you don't pause at all. You just slowly change direction. And you go the other way for two seconds. So again, we start out three seconds down. Once we get to the bottom, no rest. We slowly change direction for two seconds up. We squeeze at the top. So the contraction for two. And then I hold it. I hold the contraction for one second. So we go one, two, three. Slowly change direction for two seconds. So one, two contract for one second, one. And that's six second total rep. If you do this and you actually do it well, you will find you, can, you can't you can do nearly as many reps as if you did it fast. For our number of reps per set, I like to aim between five and 10 reps. I used to have five to 15, but I reduced it to five to 10 strictly due to psychological reasons. 10 is just a number that psychologically I found much easier to try and hit. So it just pushes me to go to that failure a bit more. Say I'm at like eight reps, I can just really aim to push for those last two and then we can go on from there. And if you are able to get all 10 reps on your first set, the next time or next workout you do, I want you to add resistance so that you're not able to do any more. Preferably I'd like you to drop down to five reps again, then work your way back up to 10 in that first set. But depending on what you have available to you, you might need to get more creative. And to round it all out, how long should you rest between workouts and how many workouts should you do per week? So this is going to vary based on your ability to recover from the workouts and the intensity that you're doing. However, if you are reaching failure, like actual failure on these, there's probably no way you can do more than two workouts per week, even if that was only one set each workout of that exercise. So just know that you might need quite a bit of recovery even when doing one set. And now for your total workout time, if you did all three sets and did the prescribed rest times between each set exactly, it would take you just about 45 minutes to complete the entire thing. If you did only one set of ex each exercise, it would be about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes, 30 minutes for two sets, or 45 minutes for three sets. Again, this really depends on the intensity you bring to the workout and your ability to recover. So with all that, if you want a full breakdown of the equipment used in this video, take a look at one of these two videos, the dumbbells or resistance bands, in order to improve your home gym and complete this program as designed.